Okay, so the other spectral map is more like the traditional spectral map. Um, and that's in... I take the displacement map, open it up in Photoshop or a texture edit editing program, and go in here and adjust exposure. This is one way to do it. Okay, there's probably a million ways to do this. So you can hand paint it, but really what I do is just take the exposure down quite a bit. And I'm going to leave it about right here just to show you how this works. So you can see here's these black spots, here's these white spots, and you got black spots here. So I'm going to take and save this as. And I got a little thing in here now. I'm saving these as TIFFs, and I'm going to call this Spectral 2. And to save time, I've already put that in Maya. So it's right here, here's Spectral 2. I dragged it in just like I did before. I'm trying to keep this as much as a non-Maya lesson as possible, and more like here's ZBrush, here's how you produce all the maps. Because you can use these in any game engine too. So it's like, you know, it's not, I'm just using Maya to show you what they look like. I could probably use a game engine to show you what they look like too. It's just a little bit faster here. Alright, so let's look at this map. Here's the spectral color and what I've done is already clicked and dragged this over to here okay and this is what I get not the special effect I get something else now let me take this off for a second and kinda of show you what it looks like without it Let's break connection okay as you can see right now it's very shiny everywhere and that's not how things look in the real world, okay? Not skulls, anyway. Skulls are very diffuse creatures, unless they are polished in some way. So the light goes onto them, and it sucks the light in. It doesn't reflect any light. So in that case, we what we want to do is, is to control light, and to control light, we use the mapping technology of spectral. So now I've dimmed that quite down, but this is more realistic. Now I always encourage students to mess around with these. You know, don't don't be afraid to jump in here and play around with, you know, what's reflective color. But please note that there's only certain things that a game engine will handle. Like a game engine will handle um, a color map, a normal map, a spectral map, uh, diffuse, there's parallax, there's glow, but uh, not every channel in here is covered under game engines. Like reflective color. Uh, I don't think I know of one that has reflective color. Like translucent focus. Okay. Again, I don't know of an engine that has translucent focus. So there's a few of these in here that are not covered under the standard engine. But that doesn't mean you can't play around. I mean, really, you can stay around in Maya and play with the reflective color and say, oh, okay, well, I'm going to throw this on here as a reflective color. Then I have a very diffused spectral light or, you know, where it doesn't have a whole lot of highlights on it. And then where it does actually reflect I have a special effect going on so you know it's it's fun to play around as a new student heck that's half the the thing that I've uh, learned from this stuff is just you know you can there is no right or wrong answer to things there's just unexplored territory And of course, it's going to get really dog slow if I try a whole bunch of these on different channels. Pretty soon, you know, I'll show you how to package up your stuff so you can, like, turn it in. Because pretty soon, 
all these 4096 maps, each one is like 50 megs a piece, um, will not fly too well. So now I got this really glossy skull, and it's got this this glass look to it. If you look at it, so again, you know, feel free to explore a little bit. And if you need to to break connection, you right click break connection. All right, now there's one more map I want to cover that can be produced in ZBrush. Um, so I'm going to jump back into ZBrush and produce that map. And so meet me in the next video.